Yeah. Oh, I'm only going to say a few words. So we have this problem with ACPI and device trees that they both do the same thing, pretty much. Uh, not exactly, because there are things that you can do in ACPI and you can't do in device trees, and there are things that you can do in device trees and you can't do in ACPI. And, uh, and the problem is that they are going to be used on the same hardware, on the same platforms, basically. And now we have the, the situation in which we can use either of them with the same hardware and with the same drivers and with the same uh, everything else. And now we need to have a way of uh, doing things that, were, that are possible with device trees, with a CPI and the other way around, or possibly to somehow combine the two. Right. So this is the problem we have. And now there are some ideas how to solve it. Uh, so one of the ideas that I know of is that uh, we can uh, modify, uh, we can extend SPI specification to, to make it possible to include some uh, properties that are available through device trees in, in ACPI objects, in ACPI device objects. So uh, how to do that is an open question. Um, all right, so that's as far as I can say, right, personally. So people have thoughts about this, I, I'm sure. And uh, so please, if you can share your views and thoughts and suggestions, it would be great. So we'd like to find some way forward from the point we are in. Grant, you have experience with ARM and and both device trees and ICPI. So yeah, so for, from our perspective, if I <coughs> can say, is the problem is that there are devices, I mean IO devices whose drivers depend on device trees and, uh, and those devices are used on x86 right now and they are uh, used on systems with ACPI. And, and the problem is that drivers, we could use those drivers easily if we could 
find a way to feed them with information they expect somehow, right? Right, so, um, Right. Yeah, no. That's a really nasty thing from a, from a platform architecture point of view. And um, I think most realistically, the, the extent that we can hybridize is probably going to be limited to, put, to having device tree-like properties at, in an ACPI leaf node. Um, we w one thing that came up in a discussion of this a few days ago was that we need the one area where we really can't accommodate device tree type properties when, is when those properties themselves are links to other nodes in the device tree. They need to be instead links to, you know, they need to instead be links in the ACPI tree in the form of ACPI device paths or, or, or similar. But uh, so that bit needs to be mapped. But in terms uh, there is actually yet a fourth class of uh, or yet yet another class of system which is sort of kind of similar to what you're describing but uh, and that is the and, uh, uh, which I don't think any any we have any solution for today which is that we're starting to see plug-in boards you know which are theoretically pr yeah you, you kind of have the extreme case of that Okay. Uh, okay. Right. Well, but what we're you know on a simpler, uh, slightly simpler uh, level, um, there are so there are systems there, there are plug-in boards that are technically peripherals, and um, 
in the Windows world, they're identified simply by a PCI device ID and possibly subsystem ID. And the, the driver, which may just be a .in file, you know, text, a text file, just act, you know, but it's a driver. Um, and we're pr so there is no ROM or anything like that on these devices that can um, that can actually um, enumerate the system, so that it has to be on part of the OS in some form or another. Now that doesn't that doesn't mean that we want to go out and write C code, effectively a board file for these things, uh, just so we can pull in the proper the proper drivers. So this is something else to think about: is that we're going to have to have these. You know, this can be done again either with uh, ACPI effectively in a, a subordinate SSDT, or in, or with a you know device tree. But it, it it needs to be something that we support. The goal is that drivers should just work on ACPI and DT platforms without having specific dependencies on either one. Did you guys kind of come to any conclusion about how to do that? Because right now we have a bunch of drivers on the ARM side that have lots of DT dependencies, for example, or OF dependencies. As I said, I, th I think the most realistic uh, op option is to tie DT, proper uh, DT style properties to an ACPI device node. Uh, I think in practical terms, though, we, we can do that. It's going to work for a certain subset of devices, and that'll be nice. We'll do that. They'll go away. We'll never look at them again. But for an awful lot of devices, it becomes non-transparent in a very big hurry. Because it, especially with um, power, the, the moment power management gets involved, everything gets messed up because power management's hard. So with device tree and the way that device, uh, power management has been approached is all the clocks and everything is tried to be described. And we have the drivers going and finding, okay, give me all my clocks, give me all, all of my devices. Uh, ACPI is going to have a different mechanism for, for doing that. And I, I have doubts that we're going to really be able to do transparent uh, description. Like, to be able to decode those descriptions transparently. And I think that what we're going to have to be prepared for in these drivers is architecting the drivers such that in the probe we have the chance at probe time, we've got our DT decoder, we've got our platform data decoder, we've got our ACPI decoder. Hopefully they'll be as small as possible because interrupts will already be parsed, registers will already be parsed, common properties will already be parsed. Uh, but then still have the ability to call out to some firmware specific interface. Yes. 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 So if we're to do that, what do we need to do uh, in the ACPI world?
can 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 we make a statement from you know those Linux developers who care to sign it of saying we want to start seeing this? We would like. No. But, I mean, we're going to have that anyway of if ACPI, the current ACPI spec doesn't support, say, super new bus that's going to come in three years from now. But we'll do, we'll, the vendors are going to do whatever they need to for their drivers to, to describe that. And then ACPI plus one is going to suddenly add support for that in the ACPI address model. What is the ACPI way to add description or add extra information about a device? So I mean I, I, I think And so 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 it's pushed it's pushed out to the driver to know what all those configuration parameters are. Right. So So the, the, so the advantage being that you know you can identify all of these things, but the disadvantage, especially for us in the Linux world, is we then need to bake all of that information for every system we care about into the kernel proper. Ouch. We don't want to do that. And it, do, it doesn't work great. Yeah. Well, there's... Right. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I can see it. it's actually really, really valuable to have every single device on every single machine have a unique identifier because we can deal with quirks that way. But not having the similar functionality of a compatible list of being able to go back to more, more and more compatible or more and more generic versions of a de device is something that I think we as the Linux community, definitely the ARM SOC vendors would find very valuable. So that is something, what's that? I was just gonna say, that's one area that we could make a proposal to the ACP, to ACPI forum of, we would like to have a, a standard way of doing this and encourage the vendors to, to have a, a generic device where you can get the data, pr data parameters while still having the very specific device that they want to have. So say that again? I yeah, but we but we want the hardware to provide us with everything we need. And we don't want the hardware to provide us with ACPI and device tree. I mean, if it's an ACPI system, let's be an ACPI system. Let's not do a horrible hybrid. Right. Right. So, so I mean, my point is that there is a very large segment of the market that needs that function, needs the functionality of describe what the device is, describe how it's hooked up, at least some of the configurations so that the driver knows has a fighting chance. Uh, if that's not an ACPI now, then there's enough people who care about this that I think we can push on make proposals to the ACPI standards oh. effort to allow for that. So, so if we Yeah, so, so.
Yeah. But but I mean, for example, this this. So I, I think that's true in the case where things that ACPI doesn't support now, but it will in the future. For the thing, we've, we've done it for years. I mean, for years, I2C and GPIO have not been supported in ACPI, and it's been botched. Um, but I think. Um, for where ACPI stands right now and what the current ACPI spec does, as a starting point, we should just outright refuse to parse properties in the, uh, to use like the device tree uh, address range decoding code if it's ACPI where we got the properties. Yes. Yeah, that's reasonable. Yeah. Yeah, that's completely reasonable. Yeah. So, so it sounds like we're in pretty close agreement that we need to make a proposal to make a change to ACPI. So, and the two things I'm hearing is we want a standard way of providing key value data pairs. I mean, that's what I've heard. Uh, especially the current assumption that if I look at the way the ARM device the conversion is happening and people still shift things around um, and, and probably means to some end of changing, you know, Yeah, but, is it, but it's still going to be tagged onto, just like with device tree, the key value pairs are tagged to the pedal. Now, I agree with the okay, way the device tree has been done. Let's take an example. Um, let's say you, you, you create a key value pair um, interface and you put your compatible um, node in. Right? Yep. Compatible property. So now, now your compatible property is in this key value bucket. Yep. Now API goes compatible support. So you can actually just describe compatible things natively in a special property in a design. Oh, OK. That's, I haven't addressed that yet. Oh, that was my second point. Well, we need compatible functionality. Okay, well, we need to make better use of it. Then. Is, is 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 that is the the number space there going to be sufficient? Is it managed well enough that we can? Uh, okay, but but they are allocated. So uh, any any vendor then has uh, four hex digits to play with, which is not the most friendly thing, but that doesn't mean it's not functional. Um, which means we is is there a database of we can get one. Okay. 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 Um, so it's. Yes. I mean. Okay, so so that's what we should be doing then is using the using the ACPI way. No, I, I think it, we want to use the ACPI way of doing things. I I may not like the particular way, but it's, uh, using the existing way is better than coming up with something new.
We, we, yeah, we use the prefix. It was, you're, we're, we're able to be unmanaged on that because everyone uses their own name. Yeah. The, the stock market. Yeah, if you're right. You're right. Um, so really the thing that's, uh, the, the main thing that's left on our proposal is value property pairs. Uh, although I think what would also need to go along with that is uh, a set of recommended best, best practices. Like once you define, uh, once you've got a compatible a string that describes the hardware in a more generic way, to be able to say these are the properties and not ever change those in a non-backwards compatible way. But that, that's the normal process. one change to all the drivers if we're going to now rely on, if we are now binding against the CID instead of binding against the compatible string. But that's a data problem. So we have to do that anyway. If we've got... But you still have to tell the drivers, you still have to... Okay, okay. Right now, right now, the way that device tree works, uh, bindings, most of them work, is we have a property that just says, you know, here's our carrier detect pin, here's our uh, write detect pin, that kind of model. Uh, my understanding on ACPI is it's actually the address space, and it's the expectation is that the ACPI methods will be operating on that. So, okay, to, just to take an example then, say we've got an MMC card which has a write protect pin hooked up to a GPIO. That's a really common case. How, what would a driver, an ACPI batch driver be expected to do? I think there's going to be a certain class of devices where we're going, where the driver's just going to need to know the GPIO pin.
No, but, but what we should, because GPIO is a fairly well-known abstraction, we should be able to have a more generic version of get me this name GPIO. And device tree has a mechanism that goes and does the decode, finds the controller, gets the GPIO associated with it. Uh, similarly, on the ACPI side, be able to decode to the ACPI address space, GPIO address space, go through the Linux kernel's mapping of that to an actual GPIO number, and return that back through to the driver. And at the same, at, at the exit of that, the driver gets the same thing. It gets a GPIO. So that would be one of the areas that, just like registers and interrupts, the backing of that, the driver doesn't have to see in the common case. It's only in the special case that we need to get, yeah. We almost do that today. I mean, already we've got many drivers, like in, within device tree, we've got particular matches, and then it goes off to a little st structure of configuration data. So it would be relatively trivial to make that little side piece of data um, an additional lookup table of key value pairs. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think we can probably just, we should be able to put that data into the match table. I think the answer Yeah, it, I mean the ideal world is you can always build a kernel that will boot on whatever the pri hardware provides by default. Um, of course that's not always going to happen, but uh, but I mean, even with device tree, when we're in Edinburgh in a month and a half, a big conversation is going to be getting that device tree out of the kernel tree so that we're moving more to make the firmware actually provide the data and less of it being built into the kernel. Yeah. No, but it, it's, it, it kind of goes with the kernel at that stage if you're having to do board specific support stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah. But. Yeah. But the but for Ben. Yeah. 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 But and we can we can also for vendors who do do come and say, well, we've got this hardware that we want to get Linux on, and we've run Windows on it previously. Uh, if it's the vendor, we can. Inc yes, but if it is a vend if the vendor is in control, we can also push back and encourage them and say, by the way, if you do it this way, then you don't need to change. The, we don't need to start adding more stuff to the kernel. So that's assuming a friendly vendor who can change the BIOS. Um, and that would be the preferred solution. Yeah. And I think that would probably gain some traction among the Windows developers if we should talk to some of the Microsoft folks about this as well. And if some of the drivers that they have, you know, by default, would just work if the data needed came out of the ACPI node instead of requiring an INF file. Um, I think that argument would probably gain support for doing it this way. But, let's, but no, but let's, let's call it, I mean, key value pairs is a valuable feature. And we need to sell more than just the Linux community on it. But the implementation as it stands right now, as far as I understand, is you give it the UUID and you get the entire block that, that's what of the key value pairs. Is. Yes. That, that's the implementation. Which I isn't a bad of way to do it, actually. I, I agree. It's not a bad of way to do it. That's the most major. I mean, why, why the other level of the right? So I, I guess when it comes to... So I guess the question then is when we put a proposal forward to ACPI, uh, do we propose do it exactly the way what Apple has done it or define a new method? Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll go ask um, Andrew, is that his name? Yeah, the, but that, that. Yeah, so I mean, let's, let's plan to have a, I don't care. I, I think we just need to draft the proposal and float it. And if... Yeah. 
Yes, but you, you, you know the background of what's going on. And we won't say any more about that right here. But there is a way. There's, yeah, I don't see any problem with that. Exactly. Yeah. So, so let's. Do you, do you have to have a a um, HID card, right? Do you have to have an HID? Do you have to have an HID? Or do you have to have a card? Do you have to have a card? Or can you buy this card? And only an HID card. It's only because most of the devices in the device field, um, like the, the compatible screen doesn't necessarily match usually on, on the device. I, mean, I don't know if many like, people like actually are um, interested in, in writing a specular event, like registering the new device, but you have to have an HID device. Yeah. 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 So how do, you, how do you get one? How do you, how do you get an HID Yeah. Well, no, actually, we shouldn't. I think that that really is something we want the vendors to be doing. No, I w otherwise, otherwise, Lenaro or Linux Foundation or or Red Hat or someone needs to then be responsible for managing these these things. It really needs to be the um, I think the vendors for the vendor specific hardware, unless it's a really common. Yeah. I mean, I mean the other. Then they will just use the device key, and somebody else wants to put HPI-based systems on on their board, and they're going to be screwed because they're half and half with the system that I mean, they <coughs> if if I as board vendor, as a board manufacturer, you can say, I don't know, when I create some piece of hardware, I don't register anything on the HPI world, but I only care about the device key. Or somebody else takes the board and wants to put the HPI on it. Then, the, then, it's then, then I, as a random community hacker, have to register the device name for me. Yeah, but uh, I mean, if it's. Uh, that, that's, a, that's a possibility. It's, it's a little boggy. It, it allows for the, for the. 
basically a state's freeform mesh. And it's one with the HID ID. But I mean, it's, it's actually worked fairly well in the device tree world recently. Of the vendors, they, they just they say what their device is. It's the imagination, whatever, or any of those. And we haven't had collisions on that level. That would drop the whole. That would make certain class of devices just work transparently. That is true, without even adding a device ID. Um, you just talk to me. And, and that would be appropriate. To So do an LNX, I think it would be probably just use LNX. No, L L Okay. Okay, so is, so what, what forum should allocate it? No, I, I don't care, but. So it's Peter, do you? So Peter, do you want to take the, the action to reserve it or? Just, just as long as someone takes the action. I'll, if no one else does, I'll do it. Well, well, how about this? We're, we're meeting again, or a bunch of us are meeting again, a month and a half in Edinburgh. Let's, um, I see two actions. One is to put the proposal together, and uh, the other is to choose what needs to be done for the reserved IDs. And we should, we should be able to have something very, very solid a month and a half from now. That would be good. I'd, I'd actually like to come and uh, talk with Andrew as well. We can go do that right after we're finished here. I'm going to volunteer Al to work for, for Al and I to do that. So, so, sorry, say again? I, I would really like to avoid that. I don't want to do namespace mangling. I would say.
We don't. We don't. The, the, anything that uses a P handle, if we want it to be transparent, is going to have to have a different packing path in the kernel. So if it's an ACPI back device, then when you call the function that decodes what you're trying to decode, like you're trying to decode a GPIO reference, it will go through the ACPI path that goes, finds the data in the ACPI format. So the abstraction there is in the GPIO framework. So the abstraction is in the GPIO, in the Linux kernel framework. It's not in the device driver. Okay, and so the device driver has one e We're going to have to, that's one of the things that we're going to have to figure out. So, and things like DMA right now, um, okay, I'll <laughs> see out like this. Uh, we're, for, for the DMA is one of those things that we don't have a solution for. And so that's going to have to be one of those things to go and research and figure out what to do about. Well, the easiest, the easiest path, <clears throat> the easiest path that I could imagine right now would be to just, um, P handles are just pointers to a number space, right? You could just put in your blob a number, say this is my number, and then have a P handle in there as well to just do a link, and then at least be compatible to what we have today, and then slowly take it from there to do real, real frameworks. I'd like to avoid baking that into ACPI implementations, because then we've got, we'd have to have a lookup table somewhere for numbers to ACPI device paths, which would work. Yeah, I, I would say if a ACPI instead of resolving a P handle, use the, use the string directly. Okay, so there should be a. Uh, there should be there should be a common framework to um, to handle resolving of of a knowledge block. Yes, yeah, so you should be completely. So you just you just say um. This this, this property this property here is a device reference, and either 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 it's, it's device um, device reference P handle or ACPI. Yeah. That would work. It should be transparent We actually already, I mean, GPIO would work very well with that, for example, because most GPIO properties are a GPIO reference, and there's a DT format. It could transparently be done now. DMA, we could, DMA, we do the same thing. We have a P handle and we have some parameters. ACPI would have its own way of doing that. But in both cases, the driver doesn't care. The driver says, what's my DMA, what's my DMA handle? How do we how do we combine? So the, the nice thing on PM is that you can have an array and PM is one piece of the array. Um, how do you do this with the string? We'd have to put commas. It's, I'll, I'll, uh, the question is how do we do an, an array of, like if a P handle can be part of an array or an array of tuples that have P handles. We, we can delimit them somehow. They're just strings. We can put delimiters in. We'll find something. <laughs> yeah. Yay. So if we just solved it all, do we all know what we're doing? What? Power management is going to be painful, uh, but that's because the PM model is completely different, as far as I understand. Paul, do you want to weigh in on?
yeah, we we do a lot of rate changing. We do voltage regulation. Voltage, uh, yeah. Well, I've, uh, a little bird told me that with some of the some of the Windows 8, when Windows RT devices, they solved that by basically writing board files. That it, it does, it's not solved in ACPI. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's another action as to start drafting a proposal. I don't think we'll have that proposal done in a month and a half, but we can have a start on it. Yeah. Okay. What else do we need to tackle? I would, I would bias towards putting that stuff in the kernel if it's basically enablement for hardware that doesn't give us sufficient information. It's, it's, it's another, it's, it's another quirk. Yeah. So basically, it would be nice to be able to provide the tools to vendors so that we don't have to do that as in as many cases, but still hold that in our back pocket when boards come along that just don't work. Yeah. And, and, and then we can have the pushback of, oh yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, that's painful. If you, did, if you do this, it will be less painful. Um, but we still have a way to go and fix it. And it's, in some cases, I've seen it work quite well where the vendor has gone, oh, okay, so you mean if I do this, then the stock kernel will just work? Oh, okay, I'll do that. It doesn't always happen. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>